Hi, welcome back to Wallflowers. So today we're going to make a recipe called Scouse. Now, Scouse, S-C-O-U-S-E, is a recipe uh, more familiarly known to Liverpool and the Merseyside area. Um, and originally it used to be called Lob Scouse. So basically, um, they used to take the leftover bits of meat, carrots, potatoes, onion, and form together and make a stew that was called lob scouse. Now over the years, uh, originally it used to be a meat, a lamb that was used, which was, lamb was cheaper cuts and it was more readily available for less finances and it would just be the leftover bits that were used to make the lobscouse and over the years the recipe has been more refined and now it's more popularly made with beef um, and that's the version I'm going to make today, I'm going to make it with beef um, but because it used to be called lobscouse there are other forms of the recipe that have gone to other parts of the UK shall we say um, so in the Liverpool Merseyside area it's basically cut down to be called Scouse in the Wigan Manchester area it's actually cut down and called Lobbies and they still use cheaper meat to make it it's one of the cheapest recipes you can make and they use corned beef rather than lamb rather than beef rather than anything else they use corned beef um, and a tin of corned beef will go a long, long way in a pan of lobbies. But as I say, today we're actually making scouse with beef. So recently I got my beef quite cheaply. Um, it should have been £4. And the portion I've got here worked out for me as I bought a bulk buy at £2.80. So I got £4 worth of meat for £2.80. I'm just going to put some oil in a pan just so I can baste the meat and seal it off. Excuse me, Mr. Walpole. Just light my pan and pop in the beef. And literally just want to coat it with the oil um, and let it seal the meat all the way round. Now while uh, that's heating up and sealing the meat I'll show you. Um, I've actually got potatoes on uh, pre-cooking. Now when we make a pan of scouse we don't normally pre-cook the vegetables. We bring it all up together and cook it together. <coughs> but there's a reason I'm doing it this way. So the potatoes I'm using, let me just pop my glasses on. The potatoes I'm using, I actually water bath them in August of 2022. Um, and I've taken them off the pantry shelf to use for this meal today. So they were water bath potatoes and as you can see, they're beautifully white. Uh, smell great, look great and I know they'll taste great. And the carrots off the pantry shelf were water bathed um, the 1st of December 2023. And again, as you can see, they look absolutely fabulous and will be delicious in this recipe. So my oil's just coming to a simmer now. And I just want to turn those bits of meat over um, to seal them. And make sure that they will retain their juiciness throughout the the scouts making. Now you will see I've put what looks like quite a lot of oil in there but I also want to seal the vegetables as well once they're slightly cooked through. Um, and that's how I do it. Come on, turn over. This lump doesn't want to turn over. I think I might grab myself a fork as well.
And when I used to have my cafe, I used to make both versions of this. I used to make the Scouse version and the Lobby's version. Um, and it used to go down in great storm. People used to one day eat one, one day eat the other. People have come in and some would prefer one, some would prefer the other, you know. But they were both very popular dishes. I used to sell a bowl of it for £3 each and it would always sell out. I'm just going to take this off the heat and leave to one side until my vegetables are ready. And leave that there. So, get my onion ready. As I say, I'm not cooking those potatoes and carrots through. Um, but when you water bath the potatoes and the carrots, um, when you come to cook with them, they take slightly, take slightly longer um, to cook through to the soft texture that we're used to. So I'm just giving them a head start. So by the time I'm prepped and all ready to go, they'll be ready. Now you can cut these as fine and or as chunky as you like them. We just kind of do middle of the road because it all splits up into individual slices anyway. <coughs> just going to get that in there with the beef. Now the herbs I'm choosing to um, use today are rosemary, oregano and sage. Now the rosemary and the sage, um, the sage is out my back garden, I dehydrated it and powdered it and that's in there. The rosemary was bought in a, basically there was, no it was actually free, there was two rosemary plants going free because um, they'd withered slightly and no one was buying them and I picked off um, what was good from the leaves dehydrated them and powdered them and kept them and the plants are now in the garden so I'll have them each year to use but that was salvaged from dying plants basically and what good leaves were left <laughs> forever frugal um, so yeah they'll go in 10-15 minutes before the end um, just so we keep the nutrients from the herbs and don't boil them boil them to death in the stew basically in the scouse so I'll add them for the last 15 minutes and I'm just going to add a couple of beef stock cubes as well so I'm just waiting for those vegetables I'll give them 10-15 minutes um, for a head start and then we'll come back and put it all together and get it going Okay, so the potatoes and carrots are cooked sufficiently enough for me to add in. Again, I only cooked them extra time and because they were water bathed. So I've removed the beef from the onions and the oil. And I'm just about to add in the vegetables. Now you will see in the pan behind, I also have some sprouts cooking. I'm not actually adding that into the scouse, it's just that Mr. Wallflowers would like some on the side. He'll add his in too when it's cooked. I'm just 
sauteing over the vegetables and basting them with the oil in the pan. coated slightly. don't need to seal them. I'm just literally basting them with the oil. And on top of that I've added two stock cubes, two beef stock cubes. Let's get the rest of it off the bottom of the jug. add the meat back in. I don't want it to splash everywhere. Now I'll bring this to the boil and then I'll allow it to simmer for approximately 35-40 minutes. Mm. Um, herbs. So after after <coughs> 30 minutes I'll add the herbs, but I'll bring it to the boil before I start simmering it. I'm just slightly... Other one. Huh? Other one. Turn my heat up. Only had that cook in nearly 20 years. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could have actually cut those chunks of beef slightly smaller, but hey ho. <coughs> Easier to take out. Oscar and I'll thoroughly enjoy ours. Brian likes what's called a blind scouse. So basically, a blind scouse is exactly the same minus the meat. Um, we normally make um, what are called scouse pies. So it's no pastry underneath, it's the scouse in the dish with a pastry topping. Um, we'll make those um, blind scouse pies without meat and they're quite nice. Whatever's Basically left. a hot pot. <clears throat> Whatever's left over we can make into pies. Yeah, yeah. If there's any left over, <clears throat> it looks sufficient just for three people there. So as I say, I'm going to bring that to the boil and allow it to simmer for 30 minutes and then I'll add the herbs. I'll come back then. Okay, we're 10, 15 minutes before the end and as you can see, it's a nice consistency. Just tasted it. It's absolutely beautiful. I just slightly want to add a little bit more water to eke it out so just to cover it is enough. And I'm actually going to add the herbs. So I've got half a teaspoon of sage. Half a teaspoon of oregano. And half a teaspoon of rosemary. And I'm going to let that continue to simmer for another 10 to 15 minutes and then we shall get to save it. It smells absolutely gorgeous, the house is full of the smell, we can all taste it. Um, we're ready to eat it. Come back in a moment. Okay and now we have the finished product so in the pan it looks absolutely delicious, we've tasted it, it tastes lovely and it smells wonderful.
as a little girl, my dad would have had the biggest bowl in the house. He would have got the biggest serving and everyone else would have just got a normal serving, but dad would have had the biggest bowl in the house. Is your dad the same? Yeah. And we have a serving left at least. I'm full of pie. Yeah. So uh, we'll make a pie out of what's left. And we'll save that with... Now everybody does it different. Um, some people like red cabbage, some people like beetroot, some people just like brown sauce. Everyone has their own what they like as a condiment on the side. Uh, we like beetroot. I like red cabbage also, but I don't have any at the moment. Um, so we'll just do a taster. <coughs> I'll say Mr. Wallflowers won't actually eat the meat. Me and Oscar will benefit by extra. Yeah. I don't know if you're anything like me, but if someone makes a recipe <laughs> and I watch them, I like to see them taste it afterwards, so mm -hmm. <laughs> this is why I always do it. That's delicious. Mm. Nice and thick. As it, as it gets a little bit cooler, it thickens also, and it is nice and thick. It's really tasty. Um, what kind of version do you make of a scouser stew? or along this type of meal what do you put in i mean of course you can put anything you've got in your fridge in it you know it's perfectly up to you but this is what we call a traditional scouse okay thank you so much for joining us today stay safe remember you loved and we'll speak to you soon bye bye Thank <laughs> you.